Today, one of the best friends of Alyssa Morgan, the young lady that committed suicide a few weeks ago at Southeast Polk. His name's Bradley Thompson. He's in the studio to talk about his feelings and his struggles with that suicide and the conditions of bullying at Southeast Polk High School. That's coming up today live on The View from a Pew. Welcome to The View from a Pew, a conversation among Christians who are out to grow their faith by asking the simple questions, the tough questions, and the stuff you really wish your pastor would talk about. Come on now, let's reason together. It's your voice we want to hear. The phone lines are open, so join the conversation. Call 244-0077. That's 244-0077. Now, here's your host, J. Michael McCoy. All right, welcome. Uh, Good afternoon. It's uh, four minutes after the hour. We're going to date this show because uh, we're going to talk about some things that are uh, uh, of current events. And so if this show plays back as a best of, uh, you'll be listening and you'll know that it was originally recorded on the 8th of May. This is Friday, the 8th of May in the Lord's year 2015. And uh, I want to introduce you to the players. Of course, Bob Montserrat, the cat in the hat, is here. Frank, uh, the verse, Thomas, Ryan is producing. And my two special guests are father and son, uh, Brad and Bradley Thompson. And uh, Bradley Thompson, uh, when we say Bradley, we're talking to the 12-year-old, correct? And when we're talking to Brad, we're talking to the father, 13-year-old. 31-year-old. 31, okay. <laughs> And uh, so, um, uh, and I would encourage you, uh, this is going to be one of those shows, you're used to them with me, but this is going to be one of those shows that uh, we're going to talk about some tough subjects. I'm also going to introduce you to a young man by the name of uh, Constantine Yana, and he is, did I say that right? Almost. Almost. Uh, Yana is my wife. Oh, I'm sorry. Get get right in front of that microphone. Constantine is correct, but Yana is my wife, so... And what's your last name? My last name is Kurmansev. Okay, so I'm just going to call him Constantine. Yeah. And uh, we're going to talk to him a little bit about uh, the mission field that he is in. He is from Russia. But um, <laughs> believe it or not, I don't even know if... I... Bob, you were on a mission field trip to the very same place that he lives at the very same time he found Christ and it very well may be your team that helped lead him there that may be a- absolutely yeah. all right we're going to actually uh, uh, do a whole show on that after this show is over and for those of you listening you will be able to turn over to webcast one live to watch that and for those of you on the radio that will play back uh, at a later date all right um this is sensitive uh because my goal here um is to not let frank offend anybody (laughs) i i wasn't kidding when i said that i know this is a very this subject is very passionate to you and so um um uh we're just going to be real careful and um um, because i don't want to hurt anybody's feeling or offend anybody uh, and if I do offend somebody, uh, I hope it's the bullies. Uh, that, that would be who uh, would be offended. I certainly wouldn't want to hurt the feelings of the mother or the family of the deceased, nor of um, your mom, uh, Bradley, uh, or anybody like that. Or Brad. I'm calling you Brad, right? No. No, I'm calling... Yeah, you're calling me Brad. Okay, father. <laughs> uh, you know, you could have named him George, Bill, you know, something. <laughs> All right, um, Brad, how are you? Bradley, how are you? I'm good. All right, and you're how old? 12. Okay, and you go to Southeast Polk High School. Junior high. Junior high, okay. Yeah. Where were you in middle school last year? Uh, six, Spring Creek, which is the sixth grade center. Okay, and that's off in the southeast corner of Polk County, <clears throat> right? Altoona? Yeah, 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 around there, yeah. Okay, and um, uh, are you a good student? I'd say yeah. Yeah. What are your What are you involved with? What's your favorite subject? Math. Well, I'd say you're a good student then. <laughs> um, uh, what's your least favorite subject? Science. Science. Okay. And uh, not that you need to know at age twelve, but do you have an idea what you want to uh, pursue as you get older in life through college and through a career? Uh, yeah. I want to be like a anesthesiologist. 
Okay, that's good. <laughs> Dad, you've done well. You'll be taken care of quite well in your <laughs> ancient age. Yes. Um, and uh, Brad, the father, uh, you are, um, what do you do for a living? I'm an insurance specialist. Okay, here in Des Moines. Yeah. All right, and Brad and I know each other from, uh, we go to the same church, uh, which 30,000 people in Des Moines go to the same church, so that's not a small world. Um, Bradley, tell me um, when you first met Alyssa Morgan. And Alyssa is the 12, and you correct me if I say anything wrong, okay? Don't let me put words in your All mouth, right. okay? Um, Alyssa Morgan is the 12-year-old young lady who chose to take her own life a few weeks ago at Southeast Polk High School. Junior high. Ju I'm sorry, <laughs> junior high. All right. Um, correct, correct? Yeah. All right. And you and her were uh, acquaintances, friends, close best friends, friends? Close friends. Close friends. And what does that mean when you're in middle school what, or junior high? What does close friends mean? Uh, we talked, like we'd like talk to each other and we'd like joke around and we just, we were friends. Okay. What kind of girl did you find her to be? A really happy, energetic, smiling girl. Okay. Um, were you aware that she was being bullied? A little bit, but I didn't think that it was like hurting her that much. Okay. Uh, have you been bullied? Yeah. And what did they say to you? Uh, they make fun of my weight a lot and like my look, like they call me like ugly or fat and they sometimes tell me to like kill myself and stuff. And I've gotten beat up. Okay, too. hold on, hold on, hold on. You're going way too fast for my Sorry. itty bitty pea brain mind. First of all, you're not fat. Oh, thanks. Well, nobody's not. No. I'm fat. <laughs> no, I mean, I know, I know what fat is. <laughs> you know, how much do you weigh? 130. And you're how tall? 5'1". That's not fat. Why did... Why, stand up for a second. You're not fat. <laughs> you're a skinny kid. Why do they say that to you? And you can sit down now. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Uh, what else do they uh, tease you about or bully you about? Uh, sometimes they'll make fun of like... Like they'll act like I'm really poor. And they'll say I steal stuff from like dollar stores or like thrift shops and it's like yeah they just make fun of like my economic status okay uh, sometimes they I talk. bet they couldn't even say economic status so you're <laughs> you're a mile ahead of them right there uh this um they talk about like they tell me like really really mean stuff about like death and stuff okay and 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 um I don't care if you mention names that that's your call yeah, I'm not going to all right so who are these people they're just kids in my grade. Kids in your grade, 12-year-olds? Yeah. yeah, 12, 13-year-olds. I'd like you to sh share the story with him about um, when you were a tank top to school. Just so uh, they know. So, yeah. This is just one of the stories. Here's just, like, one of them. Um, so I went to school, and I got, like, new clothes for my birthday. And, I w and it was a tank top, and I wore it. And the first period, like, nobody was really saying anything to me. And then when I got the second period, some kid... He came up to me and he told me I looked like a fat lesbian, but he didn't say lesbian. He said the D word that I can't say. Okay. And like I ripped off the shirt and I threw it away at school and I wore a really gross gym shirt that was smelly. That's the only other shirt I had. And yeah, it made me really sad. Why'd you take off the shirt and throw it away? Because I felt like if he, like if one person said something and I didn't really even know him at the time, and he just said something, then I bet you like a lot of people were talking about it and talking about me, so I really didn't want to wear it anymore because I didn't want to get judged even more. Didn't you say a lot of your peers were laughing when you said yeah, it too? Yeah, and a lot of people were laughing at me, and then a lot of people were like staring at me, and they wouldn't talk to me, but they would like whisper to somebody or say something and then laugh, but I didn't know what they were saying. Okay. Um, um, are these people that do this, are they, are they jocks? No. Are they band geeks? Are no, they are uh, they minority? Are they white? Are they what are they? Uh, they're like they're more like not. I wouldn't say pop, popular kids, but more they're like more like the kids that like they have a lot of friends. Are they a clique? Uh, or do they kind of run together in a clique? Yeah. Okay. Our guest today is uh, Bradley Thompson Jr. He's in seventh grade at Southeast Polk. His dad Brad is here. And we're uh, specifically talking about, uh, well, the reason that they're here 
is that um, uh, Bradley Thompson Jr. knew uh, the young lady, Alyssa Morgan, who committed suicide a few weeks ago at Southeast Polk. And um, if I understand, the mother of Alyssa Morgan has tried to get the school to kind of step up Brad, is that what you'd say? Kind of step up and admit that there's a, a challenge there with bullying, and the school system is basically saying, "No, we're not gonna, we're not, we're not gonna listen to you." That's uh, that's how it was. The school did make a statement and said that they uh, they didn't own up to the bullying, but they did own up to having a suicide problem. But they were unable to own up to the bullying problem. But then followed by telling that they were putting together a bully task force. So. Hmm. That was their stance on it. That was just a, a few days ago. What what's a what 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 is a bully task force? <laughs> um, well, he can tell you about what they have in place now, but they're supposed to enhance that. Um, what do they have I'll in let place? Tell you. Uh, they have like this thing. It's called like okay. So there's this page called Moodle, and it's basically like the whole school is like talking to each other and giving out news about school and the activities. What's it called? Noodle. Moodle. <laughs> it's, okay. Yeah, and um, so basically. You can go on this website, and you there's like a little report bullying, and yeah, you report it. What's the website? Well, it's on Southeast. Go to Southeast Polk's page, so it's like southeastpolk.org. Okay, go ahead. And just... yeah, so basically you report it, and they say it'll be anonymous, but it's not really anonymous in a way. I'd so like to ask. Oh, I'm sorry. I was gonna. Say, yeah. I was more or less telling you to tell them tell them about the Stand for Silence group. Oh, okay. And how ineffective it is. Oh, so the Stand for Silence group. There's like probably 250 kids, and that's in, including junior high and high school, and they're supposed to prevent bullying. But most of the students take it as a joke, and they don't really do much about it. And yeah, it doesn't really do anything. It doesn't help us at all. Um, I'd like to ask Bradley, uh, your friend Alyssa. Mm -hmm. Uh, was she talking to you at all prior to her suicide? Was she, did you notice any kind of change in her behavior? Anything she was discussing with you that she was uh, suffering from depression? Or did no. this just come out of the blue? It was like, in, well, on Instagram, she had like a lot of um, very sad and scary posts about like self-mutilation and her hurting herself by like cutting herself. And there's like pictures of her with like ropes rope marks on her neck cause but she, did she talk to you about it at all no not say really. she was having some issues no not really okay. all right um i'm on southeastpolk.org what do i do here now uh Moodle? can i go over there <laughs> uh during the break you can all right. yeah we'll do that during the um, break well you'd have to go to like it's like school district okay I, you, yeah I'll have to you hang you. on all right in fact you come on over here and do that and i want to go over here and con talk to uh, constantine so uh, and, and, and this is unrelated to the two. I just asked Constantine to come on and talk about his, um, uh, his ministry. He, you are from Siberia? Oh, yeah. Correct. Yeah. And uh, that's in Russia. Yeah, it's in Russia. It's and a, geographically, it's a central part of Russia. All right. And you are a, um, um, you're spreading the gospel of Jesus in Siberia. Yeah. And so you're back here hoping that some of our listeners will uh, uh, support you. That would be great because okay. we are looking for partnership there in Russia as uh, we do ministry in really tough place, I think, uh, with uh, just 1% population of uh, Christian uh, in terms of really, really saved Christians who believe uh, in the gospel and 99% um, are unsaved and it's a huge territory, big, big city. And you're, you're with Campus Crusade for Christ. Yeah. Or they're one of those companies. All right. Uh, we want to get you a couple times here to talk, and then uh, uh, we're going to record another show uh, shortly after this one that will play back on 99.3, and it will also be live on Webcast 1 to learn more about what's going on because here's what happened. I, I don't, you know, Machism number three. Uh, coincidence is God's way of revealing himself. So Bob Monserrat shows up here says, oh, hi, Constantine, I was in Siberia. What town? He names the town. What year? He names the year. And Constantine looks at him and said, well, so you were with this, what was the name of that organization? Book of Life. Book of Life. And Constantine's eyes get bigger than my stomach and says, my gosh, you're the people that brought me to Christ. 
wow we're going to talk to them later and bradley uh thompson jr is coming back next live on the truth from the remax real estate concept studios this is webcast one live Credit cards are like grandkids. They love you, sometimes get out of control, and it's fun to get a new one. Who can stop them from piling on? Hi, I'm Tom Coates with Consumer Credit of Des Moines. At the end of the day, you can give these grandkids back, but you're stuck paying off bad credit card debt. We can help you put the fun back into using credit cards responsibly. Right, kids? Yeah! If you need help getting credit cards off your back, call Consumer Credit of Des Moines. Hey. Let me let you in on a little secret. You ready? Always try to do business with people, not places. Especially if you seek honest Christian business people. And when it comes to my car, I really need to trust who's working on it. Now, my family is so blessed. A few years ago, we found a family-owned automobile repair shop that operates as a Christian business also. Open, honest, Reliable, trustworthy. It's Amco on Hickman Road in front of Kmart. And it's a family-owned Christian operating business. This family treats your car as if it was their car. Everything from oil changes to transmission repair and everything in between. So the next time you feel the need to be at peace with your choice of who you can trust with your car, give Amco on Hickman a chance to serve you. And tell them Max sent you. If you sit in the back view or the front view, it's your voice we want to hear. The phone lines are open, so call 244-0077. Now, here's J. Michael McCoy. 21 minutes after 2 o'clock, uh, we will date this program the 8th of May in the Lord's Year 2015, as what we're talking about is somewhat current in events. A few weeks ago, a 12-year-old uh, student at Southeast Polk High School uh, committed suicide. And uh, there have been uh, many suicides at Southeast Polk over the years. Um, I don't know if there's more at Southeast Polk than other schools. They're number one in the nation, I think. They're high up there. Okay. Well, I guess I got that answer. Uh, but that's the voice of Bradley Thompson, Jr. He's a seventh grader at Southeast Polk. He was uh, close friends with Alyssa Morgan. Alyssa also uh, was a cutter. That's what we call it. There's self, yeah, self harm. Self mutilated. Yeah. All right. Um, and um, I know you don't want to comment on this, but her mother said she was bisexual. And um, I, I don't, I don't want to go anywhere that is upsetting to the parents or anything like this. This is a very touchy, a very touchy subject. But I am going to say what I think most of my listeners are thinking: How does someone who's 12 years old, Frank? No, they're bisexual. I don't think they do. Uh, this this is our society. This is this is the images they're seeing on TV. Uh, this is current culture that is pushing young kids to be highly sexual at an age they have no business being sexual at. 
I understand that the meats we ate, the steroids that's in them, is causing girls to have periods younger and younger and younger. They're having more ovulation cycles. Kids are just getting introduced to sexual things way early. And I think this is a result of it, but uh, I think there's some other things going on here that may border on the demonic. Um, now, Bradley, t if, if, any question that I ask you that you don't want to answer, don't you answer, okay? Right. Just say pass, uh, and I don't want you to answer. Did Alyssa ever talk to you about her like for girls and boys? No, well, no, but she she's dated both, so. She's dated both? Yeah. Okay. 12 years old, dated both. Yeah. Um, uh, we just got to be careful here because, you know, I feel for the mother. I feel for the mother. Uh, and it, it, it's, it's so easy to be an armchair parent. You know, when I've raised four kids and six grandkids, and I've seen it all in my life. I've been blessed to have a, a, a life that's been in, incredibly secular. And I've seen it all. Um, um, that's just but tough. Mac, this is part of the LBGT movement, in my opinion. It's their, part of their agenda is to uh, super energize young people into the sexual revolution. Uh, it, it, it's, it's just part of their agenda. They come out and they admit it, that, that they want to redefine marriage. They want it to be between any numbers of people, any groups of people, including family members, to walk in of and exit out of at will. And if you would like to hear that for yourself, uh, YouTube or Google, Masha, that's not with an R, that's Masha Giesen, G-E-S-S-E-N, and she's a Russian-born gay activist who will tell you the homosexual agenda and hear it for yourself. All right. Um, I want to read for you a uh, post I have on Facebook. Uh, there is a lot of people talking smack about how big bullying is at Southeast Polk and how they don't do anything about it. Nothing is fra farther from the truth. Uh, three to five kids showed up today to walk out while leaders uh, in Stand for the Silent group asked how they could help parents and others. Uh, they were cussing them out. Uh, nice tolerance. A walkout is a rebellion if you want to help uh, the issues in life participate in solutions. He then goes on to say, while suicide is tragic, facts get lost in the shuffle, I could tell you things, but I'd get in trouble. Uh, we'd have to talk on the phone. The school is working hard, and many loving Christian teachers and students are reaching out to the kids. Uh, I had a kid in my class once kill themselves. It isn't pleasant. All right, so... Um, <laughs> Uh, five percent showed up, so thirty to forty kids on that walkout today. What was the purpose of the walkout today? Does anybody know? Just to stand up for bullying and say like that we're not gonna, we're not gonna like come to class. You guys aren't gonna do anything about bullying. So stand up against bullying. Yeah. Okay. And were you there when this happened? No. No. Uh, would you have walked out? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I would have. Um, what do you think the solution is to get kids from stop bullying? To have people teach, like have parents and family members teach people how to respect people and te not teach them that they can say and do whatever they want and to actually have respect for one another. You're 12 years old. Now, you've got your dad to your right. And I'm sure your mother is listening or is going to listen. And you've got another woman in this studio that cares about you a lot, too, who is in a parental role. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think about sex? I mean, do you, do you think about it? Not really, no. Okay. I know when I was 12, I had a, a, a term that I used all the time, uh, and that was icky girls. Because <laughs> I didn't like girls. I thought girls were icky. I didn't figure out girls were cool till I was probably 16 or 17. So uh, do you even see girls as a uh, sexual um, partner, person, girlfriend? Yeah. Yeah, I do. You do? Yeah. Okay. Um, are you active in a, a sexual relationship? No, I've never. No. No. Okay. Um, and um, um, do you know kids your age that are? Yeah. Really? Yeah. 
Like there's a there's an eighth grader at my school and she's five months pregnant. And she's thirteen or fourteen, I think. Do they tease you because you're not sexually active? No, not really. Okay. Um Brad, jump in here for just a second. You said you're you're how old? 31 years old. All right, I have a son, 31. So we're really, we've got three generations here. And uh, if Frank had admitted his age, we'd probably have almost four. <laughs> um, I'm oldest Moses. Talk about what bullying was like for you when you were a kid in high school 15 years ago, 16 years ago. I actually went to Southeast Polk High School, <clears throat> and I was bullied. Um, I was bullied daily. Um, but a lot of the things that are said to these kids now were nowhere near the things that were said to us when I was in school. Um, I'm not naive in saying that bullying doesn't happen at every school because I know it does. But Southeast Polk just has a huge problem with it, and they're, they're not handling it. Is it because there's a lot of rural kids at Southeast Polk, uh, white or rednecks, if when, you want to call them? When I went there, yes. Um, Bradley told me it's a lot more diversified now. Okay. Um, when I went there, uh, I believe there was maybe two minorities that were in the entire school when I was at school there. And now there's more minorities? Yes. And that, you, you feel, has increased the bullying? Yes. Yeah. They get... Um, Do they my, get bullied? My, my nieces are biracial, and they get bullied. They get bullied. Yes. See, I'm... I'm, fr I'm from a town of 13,000 people, Beatrice, Nebraska. Some people would say Beatrice. We had two black families in that entire town. And for some reason, they didn't have any kids. So I did not have one non-white kid in my school of what, probably 700 for high school. Mm -hmm. I don't know if there was bullying back then. Um, I, I guess if I didn't realize there was bullying, does that make me the bullier? Maybe, I don't know. That bothers me a little bit because I mean, I, I graduated in the early 70s, and I, I don't, yeah, I knew who bullies were, and you just stayed away from them. They, they were the, uh, what do we call them, the hoods. They were the hoods. They were the guys hanging around the, the library, smoking cigarettes, uh, having problems in classes, et cetera, et cetera. Those were the kids that would bully other people. I, I just, it's just amazing that this has become such an issue. When I attended uh, Southeast Polk, it was more of the, the cliques. It was all the different cliques. The jocks ran around with each other. The, you know, the music people ran around with each other, and I just didn't fit in any of the groups. I came from a, a, a metro school to a rural school, so the way that I was was different the, okay. between the way they were, and that's why I got bullied. Let me ask uh, Brad, the dad. Uh, now he's not in Southeast Polk High School, right? He's in the junior high. Is that separate from the high yes. school out on? Mm -hmm. The way that it works is. They all go to their own elementary schools, right? And then they all put they put all these elementary schools together into a sixth grade center. Well, well, let me ask this. This is the question I'm kind of uh, pointing to: Is this problem extending into the high school, or does it kind of stop at middle school? No, it's just as bad in the high schools. Did you experience some of this when you were going there? Absolutely. The suicide stuff and. Um, I didn't have a friend. I did have uh, a friend that did commit suicide, but it was after we were out of school. And I left uh, Southeast Polk my junior year in high school. Okay. All right. Um, I'm going to change the plans a little bit here. Um, um, uh, because of this delicate nature, and I'm just not uh, – uh, I'll, be, I'll be transparent with everybody. I'm feeling a little uneasy here because I, I don't want Bradley to get in trouble. Bradley to get in trouble. I don't want his mother to be disappointed in him because I'd be very proud of him if I was his father. I'm just telling you that. Um, um, so I'm, I'm going to end this conversation at this break, if that's all right. Now, so if there, I'm telling you two minutes or three minutes early, so if there's anything else you want to talk about, uh, talk. Because what I want to do is I want to get into the 12-year-old girl who thinks she's bisexual. And that's just not some place that I think we probably ought to go live on the radio with a 12-year-old present. Yeah, and that's something that we don't want to talk about. Yeah. Um, really, the big awareness is, is that these kids are getting bullied. The school's not doing anything about it. Now, you've requested to ask your son to go to a different school, and they won't let him. They denied it. Um, they told me if it was signed for anything other than bullying, they would have signed it. Um, there's a, the, the other uh, young lady that's on my Facebook. Um, she uh, tried to open enrollment and go to Seidel. They denied it due to bullying because they don't want to get a bad reputation. Right. They don't want to sign off saying that they're leaving our school because of bullying. 
And I've had numerous, numerous parents contact me for the same issue. So why don't you just change the, say you change your mind and it's now not bullying. It's because, uh, uh, the schedule in which you can get him to a school because God told me not to do that. Okay. God told me to stand up for this young lady and stand up for these kids because they don't have a voice. And, and that was a decision that I, you know, I prayed on it and I decided I wanted to stand up and say something and okay. it's done a lot of positive things since I have. Hey, Mac, just one quick piece of advice I'd like to give young Bradley. I tried to give it to my daughter when she was going to school. I know it's sometimes very difficult, but don't let them see it get under your skin. Because if they see it personally get under your skin and they, it gets a reaction out of you, they'll come in like sharks. So I know sometimes it's, it's very difficult, but don't let them see any emotion on your part when they're tormenting you or whatever. Just walk above it. Yeah, just uh, I, I don't know where your faith is, but I would tell you just give it to Jesus. Uh, when the, when the, the feces committee, and Dad can tell you off mic what that stands for, I know. <laughs> starts to roll through your head and tell you all these things that you aren't good enough and that maybe you are too heavy and maybe your shirt is this or your eyes are this or your nose are this or you da 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 da. You need to know that Jesus loves you just as you are. Mm -hmm. He thinks you're perfect. Mm -hmm. You will always be perfect in his eyes. And these kids that are picking on, pray for them. Don't be mad at them. Pray for them. They, 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 these kids are going to a place that is not a very good place if they continue down the road they're on. And we need to pray for those kids that Jesus finds them and they find Jesus. And maybe you can be, maybe you, Bradley, can be one that brings these kids to Christ. All right. I want to thank you for being here today. Uh, Brad, thank you a lot. Uh, I, I hope you're okay that we're going to end this early. I just, oh, that's fine. I don't, I don't know where else we would have gone except hashing this over and over and over. And I want to talk about <sighs> what I, I shouldn't be talking about. Exactly. No, so don't want to uh, talk about but it. But <laughs> maybe we'll come back again. Maybe the other young lady that you're talking to, maybe the two of you can come back sometime and do that. All right, we're uh, coming back live right here on The Truth. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. I'm Brian Leach, owner of Service Legends, and my position is Chief Talent Officer. I'm Nicholas Wondershide. I am Bernie Hobbs. And I'm the Service Manager. Marketing Director and Client Relations Manager. Everything that we do is about ensuring that we exceed your expectations. Our clients are important to us, 100% satisfaction. We're not just focused on heating and cooling. That's the easiest part of our job, actually, is fixing furnaces and air conditioners. Everyone that we come in touch with, we want to improve lives. Bottom line is, we've got our installation guarantees, 25% energy savings guarantee, comfort guarantee, temperature selection guarantee, property protection guarantee. 100% satisfaction guaranteed, fixed rate or it's free. All of those guarantees are backed up with a 100% money back guarantee to hold ourselves accountable to making sure that you get what you're after. Just fix them the problem today. If they have another problem five days down the road, it's still a fixed rate or it's free. We use what's called straightforward pricing. Our technicians are gonna give you an exact to the penny price on what it's gonna take before they move forward with any repair. That way you know what to expect. It's the same price every day. No surprises. If you get off work at five o'clock in the afternoon, you come home, you realize that, oh, my furnace is broken. Now you need to call somebody out that night. You shouldn't have to pay more for that. We're guaranteeing service 24-7. We run afternoons, evenings, nights, weekends. We're staffed to work that. Phone rings at 3 in the morning. You'll get one of our representatives answering the phone every time. We're not sending you out to Timbuktu in some call center. It's our service legend team members, our mission control team. I'll take a call anytime. And then they answer the phones same way during the day as they do at night. It's a great day at your service company. How can we make you smile? That's the only way to provide true 24-hour service. When you're able to let somebody actually live in their home safely when they weren't able to do that before, where they don't have to stay up at night and worry about is the heat going to come back on? Are we going to freeze the pipes? Is the baby in the room next door going to be sick because they got too cold? When you're able to help somebody overcome challenges like that, that's impacting a life. That makes a difference. I get goosebumps thinking about it. I love the team. I love the people that I work with. <laughs> we have fun, but we work hard. I call them my ambassadors of legendary service. If you could just envision what that is, that's who we're sending to your home. They literally will call in, pick up the phone and call and say, hey, I want to talk to your manager. And I get on the phone, they're like, that technician that was at my house was the greatest technician ever. That's cool to me. We want to brighten people's days. Every person that we have going into the house has gone through an extensive background check. Drug testing, we have a very thorough interview process that one out of 140 people make it through. If we promise you something, that's what you're going to get, no matter what. We're here when you need us to protect the safety and comfort of your family. If you're not happy, we're gonna make it right. 
If we're willing to put 100% money back guarantee on what we do, what type of work do you think we do? Give us a call. We're there for you 24-7, 365 days a year. Enough said. If you sit in the back view or the front view, it's your voice we want to hear. The phone lines are open, so call 244-0077. Now, here's J. Michael McCoy. Well, doesn't life unfold interestingly? Um, We were asked by uh, Brad, the father, and uh, uh, Bradley's mom to not get into the... um, uh, the bisexual feelings that this uh, young lady uh, who committed suicide had. And so I wanted to honor that. And uh, uh, I just felt that's where that conversation was going to go. Uh, so I apologize if you think it's okay that we went down that road or if you think it would have been okay to go down that road. I just need to pray about that a little bit. I've just, I've got to pray about that. I've got to. I don't, I'm not one of those talk show hosts that makes a mountain out of a molehill to get ratings or for people to talk about it. I'm, I'm a, I honor God, follow Jesus, and serve others. And if I'm not serving our community correctly uh, by talking about the wrong things, then I'm not, uh, I'm not doing what I think Christ wants me to do. So, um, you know, there would have been a day, Frank, and I'm sure you could hear this going on on the radio with Bradshaw and I. Yeah. This would have been a three-hour, six-hour, nine-hour conversation in the course of a week. Yes, it would have. Uh, but right now, I'm just going to stay off of that. Now, you did want to – here's my guess now. Uh, Constantine uh, Kermansiv. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Uh, everybody butchers it, right? It's it's fine. It's fine. About Americans, they they they, they – Challenged with uh, pronouncing last names. Well, yes, we give are. us the correct pronunciation. Uh, Kurmansev. Kurmansev. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Constantine. He and his <laughs> wife, and uh, looks like two little girls. Um, and uh, you are missionaries in Siberia, yeah. which is where you're from. Yeah. And you're over here to try to get folks to understand what you're going through. Now, he's going to talk about that, but we, we got to back up because. Uh, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, God himself, appeared in this studio about uh, 50 minutes ago. S- I'm sorry, 70 minutes ago. Because we're 10 minutes before the start of this show, and I want you two to redo that conversation you had. Well, when we uh, when I first saw him, I didn't know who he was. And then uh, he uh, said that uh, he told me his name, and I, I recognized actually your uh, accent. And I, I assume, so I'm thinking, okay, where are you from? And then you handed me. Well, I think he said Siberia. Well, yeah. And then you, that immediately struck it up. And that's when I said, uh, yeah. I said, well, I was in Siberia uh, in, in a city called uh, Krasnyarsk, which, you know, Frank, you wouldn't know what that yeah. city was or Mac. Sure. <laughs> you had to be there to know the name right. of the city. And I said it was in 1992. And, and then you responded with. And I said, wow, I'm from that city, and this is the exactly year when I became a Christian. And then you said that you, you were there with the project Book of Life. Book of Life, And exactly. I said, that's exactly how I was reached by Christ, through missionaries who brought the Book of Life to our school, where I was studied in the last year in my high school. And I was curious. I was invited to some crusade that you, have got, you organized, and I, 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 inv- I visited them, all of them. And it was amazing yeah. to see you here. <laughs> yeah. So I'm really thankful for you to 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 do this this work twenty three yeah. years ago. Yeah, it's amazing. And and as as important it is to have the conversations we were having before about twelve uh, uh, year old children committing suicide and bullying going on, I think this is much more important. I think the fact that twenty four years ago, right? Twenty three. 23 years ago, Bob, you're on a mission right? Mission in trip. his hometown, and right. he's a senior in high school. And what was, your, what, what was your faith then, before Jesus mugged you? What, what, was there any faith at all, or was it atheist? Well, I, was, or? I was just curious. I was interested in Eastern religion, uh, religions. I was interested in some, I don't know, 
uh, extra sensitive things and stuff like that because this is what uh, started to flood Russia when the Iron Curtain fell. Right, so that's what happened. So before that, no religion was allowed in Russia. Well, it was lightly allowed, but people were bullied, people were persecuted, people were uh, from different sides that were really restricted yeah. about that. You shared with the 12-year-old young man here before he left that you were bullied when you were in uh, junior I high. was bullied, but not about faith. I know my friends who were Christians when they were teenagers, they were really bullied about it. Some of them were st were set as like as a as a goal, as a target that people would just put all of their anger and their uh, bitterness. And uh, they said, "Okay, those people are Christian. Look at them, these stupid people." And all the class could could do whatever they want. I was not in that case, but because I was quite quite smart uh, guy, a boy in school. Many people tried to somehow hook me and find a weak place in my in my soul, but uh, I was I was not sensitive to that. And when they saw that, they just lost interest to hook me anyhow. And so I put advantage that I was smart and use it as an advantage, not as a target to for people to set their arrows. You know, send their arrows. So how many? How long were you there? Oh, I would say probably. Ten days. And it, what was it called, the Book of Life? Book of Life was the book of John, right, wasn't it? It was a retelling of, uh, of four gospel in the simplest way, like okay. all four gospels. All right. And it was in Russian. And how, were you the only group that would have brought that Book of Life to that community? There were different ones that went in. We were the first ones to get in when the, when the wall came down, you know, the Berlin yeah. Wall, and then everything opened up. There was a rush, like you were saying, Constantine, that... A whole bunch of different religions were headed in there. Okay. And obviously, we wanted to take the advantage oh, of yeah. that. And so uh, we went in also. I went with my wife on this. And then what they did was they sent us to different uh, to high schools and colleges, and we were giving our personal testimonies to the group. I think that, uh, wasn't it McDonald's and Levi's that kind of come in first? They were and there. And the Christianity they were there. quickly followed in after it. They were there. And mm -hmm. at the time, I saw some reports that people were standing in line, uh, like at a soup line, fighting over access to Bibles. They, well, they were. That's what we experienced, that there was a, a great hunger for what we had, and they were, people were fighting over the books, and we ran out of books. And people were traveling from many, from long distances to come to get the books, because there was a great hunger at that time. Yeah, because I know many stories when people were just handwriting a Bible just to have it, at least one for the whole group to yeah. read. So it was really hunger for that. Right. Before um, the missionaries, how would you know about Christ? Well, I just heard that he was an interesting person, and many, many different stories made up about him. But there weren't churches? No, no. No? No. Wow. Church was something that people look at like some dark place, never go there. Or even museums, too, right? Weren't they? Well, now it's more like museums. Well, okay. Uh, talking about Orthodox Church. Now, okay. during this time of 1992, were there mass baptisms going on? Because I saw some reports uh, of Olympic-style swimming pools where mass numbers of people were being baptized at well, uh, large numbers. At least it was at least like uh, big... Uh, okay, crowds of people were coming, interested in, in the message of gospel, and interested in getting Bible, and interested in all of that. But uh, like mass baptism, that's not what I was looking at. Well, I was observing those times. And we weren't involved in that either. Yeah. yeah. No, we were just getting so, the gospel out. Is there a chance that the two of you would have met 20-some years ago? That's a chance, sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I, I truly believe that there was, because whole group who came they were on the stage about i don't know 44 people i think was standing on the stage on the stage after their all those uh, crusades were over and i was looking at them and thinking okay great so many people came because foreigners were, were forbidden to come to my city because it was a city with some kind of a military production so it was not allowed to come all right we're going to take a break we'll come back with uh, eight minutes left um uh in this 
unbelievably cool. Yeah. I mean, for you, it's got to be just, <laughs> this has got to be one of the greatest moments in your life. Yeah. It is. I've had it? these. You know I have. I know you have. <laughs> All right. Uh, we'll be back with Constantine and the rest of the crew here today on The Truth. Uh, 99.3. Boy, Fridays are special. Credit cards are like grandkids. They love you, sometimes get out of control, and it's fun to get a new one. Who can stop them from piling on? Hi, I'm Tom Coates with Consumer Credit of Des Moines. At the end of the day, you can return the grandkids, but you're stuck paying off bad credit card debt. We'll help you put the fun back into using credit cards responsibly. Right, kids? Yeah! If you need help getting credit cards off your back, call Consumer Credit of Des Moines. Hey. Psst. Let me let you in on a little secret. You ready? Always try to do business with people, not places. Especially if you seek honest Christian business people. And when it comes to my car, I really need to trust who's working on it. Now, my family is so blessed. A few years ago, we found a family-owned automobile repair shop that operates as a Christian business also. Open. Honest, reliable, trustworthy. It's Amco on Hickman Road in front of Kmart. And it's a family-owned Christian operating business. This family treats your car as if it was their car. Everything from oil changes to transmission repair and everything in between. So the next time you feel the need to be at peace with your choice of who you can trust with your car, give Amco on Hickman a chance to serve you. And tell them Max sent you. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. If you sit in the back view or the front view, it's your voice we want to hear. The phone lines are open, so call 244-0077. Now, here's J. Michael McCoy. All right, uh, we're back here live on the radio and on the webcast. Um, uh, Constantine has uh, a lot of pictures he wants to share with us. And uh, uh, so here's what we're going to do. Uh, for those of you on the radio, we're not going to do that to you. Uh, sometime here in the next couple of weeks, we're going to have Constantine back, and it'll be a video show. And he'll be able to show all the pictures, and then we'll let the listeners know when um, they can go find that uh, on YouTube. And so we'll do the best of both worlds for you. But for the next uh, couple minutes, I want you to talk about your ministry and why it's important that those folks listening out there uh, contact you and hopefully uh, make donations. Now, you've got the postcard, right? And this down here, this give.cru.org, that's where a donation could be given? Yeah, it's official crew si website with uh, my account number, with the, with the ministry that we do there. So okay. we'll directly go to what we do there. All right, and he's going to put that on the... Um He's going to put that on the webcast on the screen. And in a couple minutes, if you've got a pencil and paper, for those of you folks at home, I'll give that to you. So um, what's the most important thing that you do over in Siberia in your ministry? Just go ahead and talk about your ministry a little bit. Okay. Uh, I just want to start with sharing how I became Christian uh, I, when, I, when I met people with the Book of Life. And then I, graded, I entered a university where I was among students, and I was the only one Christian in the whole university, I think. So I saw all these people who are going to be leaders in future. I was at economics department of the Federal State University, which is very prestige to be there. So it was hard to get there. And uh, when I got there, I saw many people who were absolutely hopeless. They were looking for any kind of sense of life, any kind of a goal for their lives. And uh, I tried to share Christ with them, but they were a little bit curious, but still indifferent. And when I graduated, uh, I got a job in commercial bank where I was well paid. But since maybe a year and a half, I heard a clear call from God to be a missionary. And I know it's hard to oppose God in different ways. So praise the Lord, I was not so 
stubborn as Jacob was, so I can walk, and it's okay with me. And I decided to be, be, be a missionary. I was married by the time, and uh, my wife supported me with this decision. So we started with campus ministry, with ministry to students who are there in universities. And, and as you know from history, that universities were created to be a Christian school, mm -hmm. school about God and Bible and all the things like that. But now God is some kind of casted out from from universities by this humanitarian uh, ideology and especially with, under the communism regime. So in Russia, being in university and being Christian were opposite things. So you have to be like a member of Communist Party to get to university. But to be a member of Communist Party, you need to sign up to be an atheist. So I decided to change something a little bit and change the whole surrounding. You know, it's like Jesus who stood up on the, on the boat and says, Storm, come. And storm stopped. So this is what we wanted to do because I saw all this immorality, all this hopelessness, some suicide facts in university dormitories and university uh, rooms. So this is what we started to do from 2000. I'm 15 years on staff with Campus Crusade, and we saw amazing things there happening. Like thousands of students heard the gospel. Some of them now are all over the world in different places, in Australia, in Great Britain, in the United States. And we've been sharing Christ with many, many people. All and, right. Uh, if, you, sure. if you've got that pencil paper, uh, pen, uh, piece of paper and pencil, here it is. H-T-T-P-S semicolon forward slash forward slash give dot C-R-U dot O-R-G forward slash 2737640. Give it to you one more time. Give dot C-R-U dot org forward slash 2737640. I guess it's not a forward slash. Yeah, it's a forward slash. Frank, what were you going to say? Uh, quickly, um, if you're in a rowboat, it's much easier to row with God instead of against him. But what brought you to Des Moines? Uh, it's a good question. Uh, we had the Jesus Film campaign uh, back in 2006, where during two weeks uh, we've been showing Jesus Film in 40 different spots, and over, over 33 or 35,000 people watched this movie during those two weeks. And many people became, became Christians. And uh, some missionaries helped us because it's a huge campaign for one city, uh, even with a million population and some, some churches. We, have still, we still have a very few number of Christians uh, among population. And uh, some uh, missionaries came to help. And one missionary was from United States, from Iowa, from Des Moines. And uh, he stayed with, with me in my apartment, mm -hmm. with my family. He was single that time, and we, we became friends. Uh, later, he returned back to the United States, uh, got married, and uh, got married with a Russian lady, a uh, beautiful lady. Now they have two children. <laughs> they, they live here in Des Moines, Altoona, and uh, sometimes I come to visit them and have a chance to talk to you, and now I have first time chance to be on the radio here. So it was a very chance meeting you being in Iowa, and meeting Bob. <laughs> I never thought Bob was from Iowa and he was there. So, again, thank you, Bob, for bringing us a book of life. This is really a book of life. Who would be I if right. I wouldn't receive that? Very happy. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, uh, I'm going to ask you to come back um, on Thursday the 21st, if that works for you. Okay. And uh, we're going to do a uh, video show. And you'll get together with Ryan and get all those pictures downloaded that you've got. And then we'll make a video for you. Thank you. It'll be recorded. It'll be on YouTube. And you can draw from that video anywhere in the world at any time. And that's our gift to you. And so we'll do that on Thursday the 21st. Sounds great. Thank you so much. If you want Constantine to come and speak to one of your Bible studies or your men's group, get a hold of me. And I'll get a hold of him. I've got him in my cell phone. Uh, so just get a hold of me through KTIA or Facebook or View from the Pew or Restoring Hope or Call My Better Half. Uh, there's always ways to get a hold of me. That's uh, easy to do. What a day.
Yeah. How about it, Robert? What a day. God is uh, showing you the fruits of uh, your long and wonderful life of, of, uh, of uh, being honest and being a child of God. I hope this doesn't mean your time on earth is coming to an end. Surely not. Hopefully not. <laughs> on the other hand, you, Frank, no. Uh, we'll see you next week. Ryan, thanks for producing. Thank you for listening. A special message out to Chris Roloff and uh, Mike Carbone and Stu Epperson, Jr., we made a lot, of, uh, a lot of distance this week in getting the radio station and its expanded power. We're just a few weeks away now. So until I see you again, do me a favor, forgive, would you? Gosh, if today's show doesn't tell you you ought to forgive, I don't know what would. Because as you forgive, you shall be forgiven. I'll see you in church. <laughs>